Hey everyone, welcome to the Heroic Realms channel. My name is Brandon. I'm the content creator behind Cloud Vision Productions. I'm reviving a secondary channel I used to use which explains the 1500 subs I already have. I decided to create the Heroic Realms channel to discuss varieties of comic books, movies, and possibly theories. But as of now, my main focus on this channel will be covering comic books. I want to kick off this first video on covering the Heroic Realm of Marvel. More specifically, the Avengers Kang War 1, which takes place after the dramatic events of Civil War 2. The roster of the Avengers has dramatically changed, with a good balance of heavy hitters. The opening pages start off with Jane, Thor, and Hercules simultaneously attacking a giant frost wolf in New York City. The fight is taking place near Midtown Manhattan Central Park. As Thor throws Mjolnir at the frost wolf, it quickly deflects off the beast ricocheting, nearly hitting Sam Wilson who carries the title as Captain America. As the Wasp surveys the battle, she swiftly tells Captain America of an idea she could shrink the frost wolf into the size of Chihuahua but quickly realizes she doesn't have enough pin particles to perform the task. Captain America then shouts to Hercules to catch his shield. As Hercules wields the shield, Captain America orders Hercules to hold it high and tight. Thor quickly sees the battle play, and with all her might, throws Mjolnir at Hercules, who is holding Captain America's shield. As the hammer expels a trail of lightning, it ferociously clashes into Captain America's shield, but suddenly deflects, causing a massive burst of lightning and energy. Mjolnir ricochets off the shield and crashes directly into the face of the Frost Wolf, knocking it out cold. While the other Avengers stand around the Frost Wolf, ensuring it has been subdued, Captain America approaches Hercules, asking if he would like to join the ranks of the Avengers, an already frail state team. Without hesitation, Hercules accepts Captain America's offer. With Wasp overhearing Hercules' response, she extends the invitation by telling him that he can come to a meeting that they are to attend to in downtown New York. The story then travels on to the Avengers arriving at a high-rise skyscraper building with two giant letters, P.I., which is formerly known as Parker Industry. They are greeted by a young, overzealous tech billionaire, Peter Parker. As Peter Parker introduces himself, he's quick to be a showman by telling his guests he would be honored if they would allow Parker Industries to fund the Avengers. As he gives the Avengers the grand tour, they enter into an empty hangar. While being as awkwardly theatrical as he can be, Peter unveils a Quinjet while it uncloaks using stealth capabilities. While continuing on the tour, the group are taken to the top of the Parker Industries building, where Peter shows them a high-rise room which would act as the headquarters for the Avengers. With a wasp seemingly overly annoyed during the whole tour, he gets into Peter Parker's face and remembers he is best friends with Spider-Man. Spider-Man and the Wasp were on opposite ends during the events of Civil War. Peter Parker begins to act awkward in fear that they recognize Spider-Man's true identity. He quickly tells Wasp that this is all Spider-Man's idea, and he set this whole meeting up for them. To lighten the mood, he quickly takes them to the balcony and closed with aluminium lace glass, a 360 degree view of New York City. Ironically, as the heroes are looking out at the vantage point, a massive explosion illuminates bright orange. The Avengers quickly leave the building. Peter Parker stays behind, but quickly suits up into his Spider-Man suit. An epic battle wages on between Vision and Kang the Conqueror, which is the cause of the massive explosion the Avengers saw. Mass number of civilians begin fleeing the scene. Kang begins to demand Vision to tell him where the location of the child is. Vision refuses to disclose where he has hidden the child and quickly uses an energy blast. Then, a massive burst of energy and lightning surrounds Kang the Conqueror. He begins to almost appear as if he's splitting into two. A shroud of smoke and electricity surrounds Kang the Conqueror. Before he can grasp what is happening, a sudden hit to the face from Captain America's shield causes the pair to stumble backwards. The Avengers arrive on scene. The Avengers appear disoriented and confused by the fact there are two Kangs, but Captain America disregards the unusual events as he advances on the two threats. From above swings in Spider-Man, landing a sudden kick on Kang the Conqueror. The fight rages on as Captain America tries to figure out what exactly is happening. Vision responds by saying Kang the Conqueror appeared out of nowhere. Growing annoyed and impatient, Kang begins to showcase his knowledge and powers from the future, using a sudden blast from high-tech weaponry, knocking down Vision and Captain America. Kang begins to show his might by causing a storm of energy exuding from his body. The storm of energy begins to create chaos and destruction. As the building begins to crumble, innocent civilians begin jumping and falling out of the building. With a quick reaction from Thor, Spider-Man, and Captain America, they begin catching the helpless victims. Vision, seemingly distracted by trying to save the innocents, is attacked by the second Kang the Conqueror and is badly injured as he smashes him into the concrete. While the rest of the heroes save innocent civilians, both Kang the Conqueror surround Vision, trying to extract information from his data bank. Kang the Conqueror realizes they won't be able to extract information from Vision, but rather decides to regroup. Both Kangs teleport and leave a worn, torn New York City behind. 
The Avengers quickly notice Vision has been badly wounded and return back to Parker Industries, where they focus on repairing Vision. While Vision regains his strength, Nadia Pym asks Vision to tell them about Kang and his second self who appeared. Vision explains the last time they fought Kang the Conqueror, it was an alternate version of himself. That alternate version of Kang explained that a firewall was preventing him from traveling forward from present day. Vision begins to describe how Kang the Conqueror has maintained several identities over the course of different centuries, and that firewall was causing its own set of time paradoxes of which they've only seen a hint of. Kang the Conqueror now has the power to doctor time like surgeon without leaving any scars. Captain America then interrupts and asks who is the missing child and why is Kang declaring war on the Avengers? To which Vision replies, it was I who declared war on Kang. The Avengers and Spider-Man appeared speechless. Vision begins describing how Kang's relentless attacks and never-ending cause of chaos pushed him to the edge by traveling back in time himself to when Kang was just a mere infant to kidnap him placing Kang in a secret location where he wouldn't rise to villainy. The Avengers begin to push back against Vision, seemingly upset for going about this plan without telling them. Kang the Conqueror and Second Kang, now known as Centurion, begin observing the timeline of Vision's lifeline by going backwards. They find an event in the past where Vision offloads the knowledge of where infant Kang is hidden onto a crystal sphere that contains data. Kang, with ease, is able to steal the crystal sphere from the past. As they learn the hidden location of their infant self, both Kangs want to wreak havoc and pain on the Avengers. The two vow to a pact to be merciless and kill the Avengers once and for all. Back to present day at the Avengers headquarters, Captain America describes a feeling of shudder as if a rabbit ran over his grave. Thor seemingly confused by the expression and not understanding Earth's customary traditions, Captain America begins to explain its Midgard's way of saying an uneasy feeling of mortality. We see Kang the Conqueror and Centurion traveling back in time to when the Avengers were just infants and when Vision was being created by Ultron. Both Kangs begin slaughtering different members of the Avengers when they were just children. The Avengers begin slipping from time and disappearing from present day. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the breakdown of Volume 1 of Avengers Kang War 1. If you want a more in-depth story narrative of Volume 1, I recommend you guys buying this issue. You can get a more in-depth feel on how each character plays an important role in this fantastic series. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. I hope you guys enjoy this first video on the Heroic Realms channel. I'll be releasing more videos soon, so keep an eye out. Until next time, as always, stay heroic.